and we didn't mean to disrespect her, it was just the strategy. So, uh, so eventually, at about 90 miles, Juan blew by Ann, and he won the race, and he broke the course record, and, and it was a beautiful thing. The Roramari, from this small village of 400 people in the Sierra Madre, came in first, third, fourth, fifth, seventh, eighth, and 11th places. So seven out of the first 11 places. And um, the beautiful part of this experience was La Bruja came in second place. The first woman, the first gringa, gringo, was a gringa. A woman came in second place. And that just goes to show that the women are tougher. Women have more endurance than men. And the longer the distance, the, the better chance a woman has of performing well, because you really are tougher. You really are stronger than men in many ways. So, so uh, anyway, um, during the course of the last part of the run, my man, Marta Miano, all he could talk about was La Bruja up ahead and how amazing she was. And, you know, Anne didn't think, she thought we were insulting her by calling her La Bruja, but it was really a great honor. It was really a term of respect, and we really did respect her. And we talked about how we could honor La Bruja. So at the awards presentation after the race, um, I gave a, a talk saying how my man, Marta Miano, had, had constantly talked about the prowess of La Bruja and how much he respected her, and we wanted to honor her with the gift of Korima, sharing a gift. And the Bruja came forward, and she was a Nike-sponsored athlete. She received her gift, a pair of homemade Tarahamara Horachi sandals. Mm -hmm. That was my experience, having run the last 50 miles with Marta Miano, and getting to know this fellow. It was my reason to begin going to the Copper Canyons. I'd always had an affinity for, I'd always admired the Tarahamara. I'd read about them, and I always wanted to go to the Copper Canyons, but the Copper Canyons are kind of hard to get to. They're in northern Mexico, but they're kind of out of the way on my way to southern Mexico. So I decided I was going to go visit my friends in the high mountain town in Choguita, and I took out a coat drive at a uh, public radio station in Boulder, Colorado, and I, within a week I had 400 high-quality coats and sweaters uh, donated to the Tarahamara people who lived in this high mountain village where it's cold. I filled up my camper truck with coats and sweaters. I started driving south and I was um, really anxious to uh, find the village where my friend Martimiano lived and give away these coats and sweaters because I didn't have any place to sleep. My camper was full and I wanted to get rid of these things. So, so fortunately and luckily, I somehow, thank you, I somehow uh, found uh, Juan Herrera, the guy that won the race, uh, uh, found me. He just got back from a free holy harvest somewhere in northern Mexico, and and uh, I said, "Wow, this is great! I'm, you know, I had no idea where you guys live. Where do you live?" And he goes, "I'll take you there." So he had a free ride to his home in Choguita, uh, which was about 50 miles from Creel, the tourist town, and uh, it was. I drove my truck on pavement for about 15 miles, and the last 35 miles were on dirt road, really rolling bad, hard dirt road to his village. And I drove up there, and it was very stressful driving my camper up on this gnarly dirt road. Uh, a week later, I would do the same trip by foot, and I drove it in five hours and 15 minutes, and it took me five hours and five minutes to run it. So <laughs> it was way more efficient to run it, and it cost a lot less gasoline. This was my gasoline. Every day, I'd wake up in the morning, and there'd be a big pile of pinole, tarhamara, uh, cornmeal and just really great stuff. Tar Tarahamar sports field, <coughs> and and there'd be hand padded tortillas with frijoles waiting for me. And the people took really good care of me in their own silent way. And people didn't approach me, but they left these gifts of korima sharing for me. And after a while, I began to think I want to do something for these people, but I want to do something for them to help themselves. I don't want to. I want to encourage them to keep running, and I'm, I want to run with them, and I'm selfish. And how can I run with them? 
make a race. That's how I can run with them. Great. All right. So I ran out to Ramory country and I spread the word, hey, there's going to be a race. Anybody wants to run with me, meet me on the trail on March 20th. And we'll hike over from here out of the 6,000 foot deep canyon over the mountains about six miles, then down to, into another 6,000 foot deep canyon to a town of Orique. I'll buy you guys a hotel in Orique and I'll buy your meals. We'll spend a couple nights there and we'll race back. And I've got prize money. I've got, oh, let's see, what have I got here? I've got 150 bucks for first place, and 100 bucks for second place, and 50 bucks for third place. And, well, that's not very much money, Kawaki. Kawaki means Kabyle in, in Taramara. It's not very much money. And I said, what? Well, it's what I've got. And besides, Ramon Chingon thinks it's good money. Ramon Chingon, who's he? Well, Ramon Chingon means Ray the, Ray the Badass from northern Mexico. And he's an Apache who lives in northern Mexico. And he tells me, actually it means Ray the Big Fucker. But down, <laughs> down there, it's a compliment to be a big fucker. <laughs> Don't ask me why. It's a macho society. And it, and it actually means, yeah, you're it. You're the man. You know, Bill Clinton was considered a Chingon. <laughs> but we won't, that's another cultural aspect that we won't get into any further than to say that Ramon Chingon, the Ray the Big Fucker, the Apache from northern Mexico, he tells me, you guys are wimps. What? Ramon Chingon says, the Ramri are okay runners, muscle menos buenos corredores, but they can't touch the Apache. Ramon Chingon said that? Yeah, he said that. Let's go. Vamos. <laughs> so I'm walking over the mountains. I woke up in the morning. I had no idea what to expect. This was in 2003. I had no idea what to expect. I'm walking over the mountains, and a couple of Ramri fell into, onto the trail with me. Get a couple more miles, another couple of Ramri are waiting for me. Get another couple of miles, there's another couple of Ramri. And I'm going, wow, this is great. I'm climbing out of the Batapilas Canyon, walking over the Sierra and there's myself and eight Raramri following behind me, and I, I'm feeling like uh, uh, Kevin Costner in the Field of Dreams, right? <laughs> it's like, wow, uh, you know, what was the guy, uh, what was the, the guy in uh, Shoeless Joe or whatever? But these guys were shoeless Indians, you know? And they're following me over the mountains, and I'm going, wow, this is just awesome. I'm walking over the mountains, and we're, we're interacting together like the particip life's participants that we are. There was no division. There was no me and them or us and them. We were walking together. We get to the town of Orique. I bought them the nicest hotel in town, which was uh, about 30 bucks. And we bought this room. And, and the lady who owns the hotel is also the best cook in town. And she's got the nicest restaurant called the Plaza Restaurant. And her name is Grandma Tita, La Abuela Tita. And uh, she said, Kabyle, this is so cool. You're buying the rooms. I'm going to buy the meals. So that was our first sponsor. I had a sponsor. <laughs> so a pretty organic sponsorship. And in Batapilas, they're just Indians. There's nothing special about these people. They're great athletes, but who cares? They're just Indians. They're treated like second-class citizens. And in Orique, they were treated like champions because they no longer exist there. Therefore, as human two-legged confused ones, we tend not to appreciate what we have until it's gone. The air, when the air, you know, when the air is polluted, we wish we had clean air. When the water is dirty, we wish we had clean water. When you're when your partner leaves you, boy, she was nice. <laughs> what happened to her? You know? So it's good to appreciate what we have as we have it all the time. And, and that's, that's a native uh, Indian form of prayer. It's just to appreciate what is. That's praying. It's not wishing what, it's not asking for something else. It's appreciating, appreciating what you have because that's, that's where it's at. That's the reality, I think. So. Anyway, we ate really well. The people treated us great. Come race day on Sunday, we all lined up in front of the Plaza restaurant. 
to start the race, the whole town would gather around. And five big fat guys showed up at the starting line, big Mexican guys, claiming to be members of El Equipo Chingon, Team Big Fucker. <laughs> <laughs> and they lasted about 10 meters, and then they died. But it was, it was fun. They, everybody had a good time, and everybody had fun. So. And the Ramory took off like, oh my god. It's like, is this a 5K or what? You know, they just took off running, and I'm like way behind them, wondering what the hell. And I saw no trace of them. I ran in their Huarachi sandal tracks and just ran over the ma mountains following these tracks until I got about a mile from the town of Batapilas, which was about 30 miles, 31, 50K away. And then I noticed that there were uh, two of them eating goat and drinking beer at a, a local's house who was uh, invited them to eat and they don't turn down food so they stopped the race and they just started chowing down and I passed them. So I didn't come in last place, I came in seventh place. That they showed up a little while later with full bellies. And the next year, rather than have the race in Batapilas, I was ran over to Urique, the other canyon, to practice. The people there told me, we want you to have the race here. What do you want to have the race here? Aid stations? Aid stations, you've got it. Prize money, you've got it. How much do you want? Thousand bucks, fifteen hundred bucks, wow. Um, trail maintenance, what's that? Trail maintenance? Well, yeah, clean up your trails. They're really dangerous and, and it would be to your benefit to take good care of your trails. And besides, a Chingon journalist is coming, a hotshot journalist is coming from the New York Times and he's gonna write about this. And, <laughs> It'd be bad PR if somebody ran off trail and died. Okay, you got it, trail maintenance. That was this year, 2006. Christopher McDougall showed up, Scott Jurek, Barefoot Ted, Jan, Billy, Luis Escobar. It was the first year a team of international runners came down to run with us. We did the race, and it was a beautiful experience. And after a while, there were Amory started chattering. We were all going through the same experience. It took us 10 hours to walk over the mountains together. By the time we got to the other canyon, we're all friends and we're all part of the cultural exchange of trail running people. We get to the other, the other canyon and we walk into Arike at nighttime and we got rooms uh, together in the same hotel. We ate together in the same restaurant. We all interacted like the uh, trail running people that we are, and it was a really beautiful thing. We raced, we ran the race, the whole town got behind it, they aided the race pretty well. That, that year it wasn't completely really well, every year it gets better and better and better.